Hi everyone and welcome to that Sewing Blab. We're at episode 158 and today we're interviewing Sherry, the refashionista. Yes, we're very, very excited. Um, we do want to mention uh, a couple things first. We have been doing this fabulous kind of refashioning month, thrifting month, just getting ourselves to think differently about clothing. Because often, you know, when you talk about sewing, we talk about, you know, buying a piece of fabric and then making um, a garment out of it. But, you know, looking at our own closets, you know, and seeing what's in there, getting those waters out of the basket, things that didn't work and turning it into something else. We have Sherry tonight. And yep. last week we had um, the ladies from So Much Talent. We had Elizabeth from Elizabeth Made This, Tisa, Tisa Taylor, and uh, Alethea Hudson. from, And um, they're the admins and Alethea is the person who started it. And we got some lovely tips on refashioning and Alethea and Tisa will be back to join us talking more about alterations versus refashioning next week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this week, the one, the only, <laughs> Sherry from Confessions of a Refashionista. So we're absolutely thrilled to have her join us this evening. Um, Sherry is a very, very, very interesting woman. As soon as you meet her, you just want to talk to her for hours. She's just fascinating, very knowledgeable, um, very lovely. She shares her knowledge with everyone, which is great. Here she is. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we're just trying to make sure if, if somebody hasn't seen you before they understand the amazing work that you do your eco eco style warrior she's got um goodness me book ebooks she's got tutorials nearly 1500 yeah <laughs> 200 That's amazing videos, over 200 <laughs> videos on her youtube channel like she's got a substantial essentially a library a body of work all around being um, sustainable and uh, a lot on thrifting. And it mm -hmm. I think it's really good because when you think thrifting, sometimes you only think of a really narrow kind of thing. But Sherry, definitely make sure you see all the different aspects to it. And you can find your little niche in there that makes That's you comfortable. Right. I think the first thing we should discuss before we do anything else um, is talk about what Sherry says is kind of her kind of definition. Because I think this is, is it's just brilliant myself. Um, she says that a refashionista is a kick, um, <clears throat> um, DIY. Okay. We're adults. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Just say it. DIY say eco, eco fashion upcycling warrior who firmly believes that fabulous, affordable, unique style can be achieved by anyone without supporting the growing phenomenon of unethically produced products in fashion. It's true. Fashion. It's true. And I also love that she says, reusing what you already have in your closet, shopping pre-loved and refashioning are a marvelous start to a wardrobe full of truly unique, and that's very important, truly mm. unique, sustainable mm. fashion that reflects your own unique style. When I read that, I thought, goodness me, she's just, that completely describes what she's doing. So thank you very much for joining us tonight, Sherry. Well, thank you for having me, having me back. Cause like yes, last time it, was, it wasn't long enough. We could have talked forever. <laughs> Exactly. Of course. Oh, my goodness. Um, tell us about your sewing story as a start. Well, I, I uh, am kind of a unique little flower, I guess. You <laughs> are. The, the, the fact that um, I didn't grow up sewing. I didn't have, you know, the lovely mom or grandma that taught me how to sew. And I've been sewing since I was seven. No, 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 none of that. I actually spectacularly failed home ec <laughs> in uh, in high school, you know, when they used yep. to force the girls to take to take sewing and cooking and the boys took the really yes. cool industrial arts. I mean, come on. And so, yeah, so I, I failed spectacularly. So I never touched a sewing machine again because that teacher was very mean and let, let this be a lesson to teachers out there, you know, be kind to your students That's and right. don't yell and call them names <laughs> because it really does affect them. I, I didn't touch a machine again until I was in my late thirties when I was living in Berlin and I inherited mm -hmm. my husband's great aunt's ancient heavy clunky privilege german sewing machine it was like a wow. 1940s 50s terrifying uh 
metal thing. <laughs> there it is. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it, it weighed so much. And uh, when, when I started to sew with it, it was terrifying. And I stopped immediately because it was like, <laughs> I mean, I thought it was going to eat me. And uh, <laughs> really, but then I started, you know, going through my closet and thinking, nothing ever fits me right because for some reason clothing manufacturers think that we're should be eight feet tall right we should exactly. have no chest whatsoever mm -hmm. <laughs> so, no curves no nothing yeah, yeah. yes so i i just started with really simple projects and uh you know to to shorten pants and to try to let out some shirts mm -hmm. and uh my friends in Germany were like, "Hey, that looks really cool. You just put some fabric panels in the in that blouse, and uh, and uh, you should start a blog, and you should share, and you should." And so I went, "Okay," <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, as with well, anything, you or I, I anyway. Uh, my husband says I'm a bit of an overachiever. Um, but, um, That's um, why he married you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> Uh, but I just, you know, I, I taught myself how to sew on this uh, this ancient machine, and I just never looked back. It was something that I guess it was in me all the time. You know, mm -hmm. I've always done creative things, um, and I'm really regretting now that I allowed this uh, this feeling that I got from this teacher and this horrible experience in high school to have held me back from sewing, you know, for mm -hmm. so long. So mm -hmm. uh, let that be a lesson to everyone, you know, just because you have a bad experience, D don't stop, keep going, keep going, really. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's good. It's brilliant advice. Yes. And um, what I picked up, and we never, we didn't even get, we scratched the surface last time we talked with you, really, yeah. mm -hmm. but we never got to talk about the fact that you've lived in a lot of different countries as well. And I think it's important to note because I think it actually shapes the woman you are today, including... Oh, including your refashioning and how oh, you see 100%. sustainability mm -hmm. and everything. So we, we do have a couple of photos there here of some of the countries that you've lived in. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about each one. <laughs> well, when I was uh, in my very, very early 20s, I managed to get a super lucky modeling contract. Uh, my big dream in life was, was to be an, an actor. And uh, so as an offshoot of that, most actors, you do some modeling on the side and, you know, while well, you're struggling. And yeah. I, I got a, a, a lucky contract to Japan and it was only supposed to be for three or four months. And I ended up staying there for more than a few years. That's <laughs> and, amazing. Uh, it's really yeah, good. Because yeah. I guess, you know, I did my job I and I learned the language very quickly. Um, that's... Mm -hmm something I, I seemed my brain seems to work in such a way that I can pick up languages quite quickly so yay mm. um yeah, yay for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I think again it's also that that uh, part of me that just says just do it you know if you if you're learning a language you go when you go to the supermarket practice it you know the the local people love it if you're trying to speak their exactly. language and yeah. and then you learn you know and I often asked people, you know, help me out. What am I doing wrong? Where where should my mm. verb and adjective be in the sentence? You know, mm. you can't be shy when you're in a foreign country. You know, it's great. Mm. <laughs> you don't have to be yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so from there, after my time in Tokyo came to an end, um, I moved on to London, England. Mm -hmm. where I actually taught English to Japanese students, which was hilarious. Oh, <laughs> my God. That is good. What a turnaround. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I did that to pay my bills while still trying to be an actor. And mm -hmm. uh, I also sang in a pub band, and I did stand-up comedy. Um, and then, of course, I didn't get the fame and fortune I desired there. And mm -hmm. on a whim, basically, decided, hey, I'm going to move to Greece. <laughs> okay. So I did. And, uh, that's the great thing when you when you are in Europe, it's very easy to go to go, you know, especially to EU countries. It's uh, yeah. it's lovely. And um, yeah, so there I started my own bilingual entertainment uh, magazine for the island that I lived on. And um, I believe we put out nearly 60 issues. 
and it was uh, bi-monthly, so it came out twice a month, and it had, it was in Greek and in English, and again, another language, of course, I learned, and because uh, I was writing, writing a magazine. That's like, so <laughs> impressive. Yeah. Seriously, that many issues twice a month. Well, I mean, again, overachiever. <laughs> yeah, of course. And, and again, got to pay the bills. So it was a lot of hustling yeah. to get advertisers and, uh, yeah. and, and yeah, I mean, that, that's the funny thing. Um, when you do live in a different country, mm. people who are, you know, contacting you through Facebook, whatever your friends back home. I mean, I don't think of Canada really as my home anymore. Cause I lived abroad for you know, over 22 years. Um, but you know, they think for some reason, like it's a holiday. Like, oh, you live in Greece. You must go to the beach every day. It's like, well, exactly. no, no. I, I got to work. <laughs> yeah, I got to pay my bills. So, like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's what I did there for nearly five years. Yeah. And um, then I got itchy feet again, as I call it, and uh, moved on to Berlin, Germany. Ooh. And there I first had a textile design and print company with uh, my with my boyfriend who's now my husband and <laughs> and uh, oh there yes so so um yeah i i took my graphic design skills and um created a bunch of designs and then we printed them on stuff and sold it <laughs> so, and then it was well during done. that time that i inherited the sewing machine and started yep. the blog and the channel and everything else so, yeah and now here we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you miss any of those countries or that lifestyle that you were leading at the time? Um, I mean, yeah, of course, I miss things about yeah. every about every different country. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, the things I miss are a lot like the cultural things yeah. that mm -hmm. uh, I found very um that i adapted to and so mm. then each time i moved to a different country there was a whole new set of social rules that i exactly, had, to, yeah. had to adapt to and learn and uh i think again like dawn said these there's so many things that i carry with me mm. now you know from each of these countries and i think that yep. um hopefully i've taken all of the good things <laughs> with me. oh you have <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and again it's made me um a very strong woman you know and i i really really hope that i am uh, setting a very good example for for my daughter now and uh, to show her you know she can do anything she wants to do regardless of your mm. age or your gender your size your your shape your anything you know yeah. yes exactly well <laughs> yeah that's a great message very yeah, very yeah. inspiring and um, i from talking with you i find it very interesting like some of the things that you know like growing up in canada there's probably a lot of things that i don't really know that they do it in different countries so in regards to sustainability um mm. like you were saying uh was it once a month they like put stuff out on their their front lawn like couches or whatever clothing that you might not want and then oh in yeah in i mean in in germany it's it's not just that you can put an ad on you know on in the free site type of thing yeah. which we often did um but you can also put things out and then people can take them if they don't take them you take them back you don't leave them there for okay. the trash to take <laughs> like, like they do in so many other countries, you know, returning, yes. returning to Canada after over 22 years living in quite sustainable, um, eco-friendly countries, I mm -hmm. am in so shocked and dismayed first at just the amount that people throw out and what they throw out. Like I, my, my house is, I'd say about 90% furnished from mm -hmm. trash that people threw out that I, you know, bring it home. And sometimes it's just something that needs a good clean, like a, a table or something. Other times I upcycle it into something else completely different mm -hmm. or just kind of spruce it up with some paint or fabric. But uh, yeah, it's really, it's really sad that, that a first world country that mm -hmm. has so many resources and supposedly so many intelligent people, you know, these intelligent people are just 
chucking and chucking and chucking and, ch and you just go, why? It, it doesn't make any sense to me. There's always somebody who will want it. There always yes. is, yeah. you know, and putting an, an ad on the local free app or the local free website, you know, Craigslist, I think Kijiji here, um, eBay has it in Europe. They have their own um, Klein and Seigen, it's called in Germany. And just put it on for free. Someone will come and take it away, mm. you know, because yeah. they want it. Don't don't chuck out a sofa. That's what? <laughs> yeah, it makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah, we're definitely a consumeristic, like very consumeristic society. The make do and mend generations is gone even yeah. we were cleaning out a house and my brother was throwing like um instead of bringing it downstairs and taking somewhere that would a thrift store uh was a mm -hmm. set of drawers he threw it off the top uh oh, story no. of the house and let it smash so it so we could so put it's it in destroyed the, so we could put it in the dumpster you know i kind of threw yeah. my brother under the bus there but nonetheless <laughs> things like that whereas i i like to go to um those thrift stores and like I got this cool little metal table and all it needed was some spray paint, literally spray yeah. paint and some little um, sticky things to make sure the glass top wouldn't move, you know, like oh, yeah. Yeah, get them. Yeah. And I, I had a barbecue and everyone's like, oh, that's such a nice table, you know, I'm like, yep, we got it from a thrift store. <laughs> exactly, <you know? laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, when people see my house and go, oh, that is such a beautiful vintage cabinet. So, yeah, I got it. I, it was outside down the street. <laughs> you know, I just sanded it and <laughs> that's it. You know, it was free. And, but you could sell it. And I don't want to sell it. <laughs> no, you want to keep it. That's why you picked it up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, yes, we definitely need to talk about your blog and your YouTube channel because we we can't even, you just can't describe everything that's on there. Like, I'm not kidding. There's so many posts. Was it like over 1,600 posts that you've made with tutorials, tips, things that inspire you? Articles, like, yeah. Yeah, the epic Stranger Things. Um, oh, yes. Look alike my, series you just did. Oh, my I love thrifty I love celeb life. copycats, yeah. <laughs> It's so yeah. much fun when you see them. But yeah, I, I started that because, again, coming back to North America mm -hmm. and seeing, you know, that really people, they see something on TV and they want it. And then they get it and they wear it once and they and they literally throw it out. Just like, what mm -hmm. are you doing? And you see all of these fast fashion mall stores, although designers aren't much better as for for ethical production practices. Mm -hmm. um, but and and it just made me weep inside, <laughs> basically. So I thought, you know what, I betcha I can put together some pretty awesome looks using either only what I have in my closet, or items from the thrift store and and copy what these celebs are wearing. And I did <laughs> so for, you know, some of these outfits, literally, I, I had all the pieces and I either I yeah. inherited it like a, the Jennifer Aniston red suit that was actually hanging in the closet with a bunch of other fabulous vintage clothes. When I moved into my house, the people that left just left a bunch of awesome vintage clothes of the person that died. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, I'll take them. <laughs> I'm like, cool. Help them out. Just help them out. <laughs> yeah, I am, definitely, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, and that, you know, it was a, a very close copy to the $10,000 mm. suit that Jennifer Aniston is wearing, mm. you know, in, in the picture. And, um, yeah, people like them so much, they've gone viral more than a few times, <laughs> my looks. And then... <laughs> Of course, I had to do Stranger Things, and I did nearly all the characters. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was very clever, and um, I do think that tells you something not only about your thrifting, but about how your brain works. You, like you said, you're an overachiever. You are doing lots, but you're also mm -hmm. you you do have your finger on the pulse of what's going on. You oh, know, for sure, yeah. You, I mean, and thrifting things on TV, like yeah, mm -hmm. it's very. Very interesting. 
Yeah, and I think as well, doing the, I mean, like, because I did male characters too. I didn't just, you know, yes, dress you up did. like, yeah. yes, <laughs> some of us. <laughs> and I think that's the other thing too, you know, um, like I said before, you can never be afraid to kind of put yourself out there. And I, like I come from a background of acting and comedy. And uh, so throwing on a makeup mustache, you know, with the mascara and all of this, that's, that's hilarious for me. Yes. I much prefer <laughs> to do those kind of looks, like dressing up like Billy, but then having this big chest in the tank top. I mean, <laughs> that like, with the mustache and the black eye and hello. I mean, it's, yeah. So, I'm the look, so that was it. Yeah. And, yeah. and if you look at a lot of your videos too, you do, you do characters in them. So, I, do. I mean, you have a very serious message, but you, you give it in a very large light-hearted way but still educational so i mean your video when you're talking about how people could support you to share your eco message that was fantastic or even when you're doing videos on you know kind of busting myths on thrifting mm. you know like you you become these characters these people and your accents are spot on i mean <laughs> i'm not an expert but I, they, they sound pretty great. Well, that's that's the thing because for the the busting thrifting miss video, these I've met these people. Like these are <laughs> these are real. These are actually the people who said the things to me. <laughs> yeah, so, so I think and in some ways it's also my little kind of a eh, to get back at them, right? It's like, hey, I'm becoming you. So, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I mean, speaking of of myths about secondhand. One of the greatest things I think you can ever say to someone who is kind of like, oh, secondhand is so gross. Oh, no. Ask them if they ever go to a restaurant. And if they say yes, then say, do they think that the cutlery that they put in their mouth mm -hmm. is brand new for every single customer? Or perhaps are they putting something in their mouth that was maybe 20 minutes before in a stranger's mouth right so that's perhaps, really good thinking. <laughs> yeah. so perhaps getting a dress second hand that mm -hmm. you can take home and wash and you know it's clean because you washed it with your own hands right? yeah. instead of in a restaurant you don't know what's going on <laughs> in that kitchen if someone's just going <gasps> right and <laughs> <laughs> and to get out again. Which would never happen. Oh, it now I'm sure. <laughs> Not, none of the restaurants I worked in when I was a starving actor ever did that. No, please. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the other thing too. Anyone who ever has worked in the service industry mm -hmm. kind of thinks this way as well, because we know, you know, what goes on behind the scenes. And uh, another good one is to ask them if they've ever stayed in a hotel, because that's even kind of grosser when you think where the towels have been. Oh, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I mean, that is something that I yeah. I won't buy secondhand or towels, just mm -hmm. specifically for that reason, because yep. no thanks. <laughs> like, I don't want to think about what it has wiped. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> yeah, I, I think what's really cool is um, like busting that myth about it being um, dirty or smelly. Mm -hmm. um, even if you did find something that was a little smelly, um, I've had things that are musty because I oh, tend, yeah. to, tend to kind of lean towards vintage type stuff. Yeah. So sometimes yeah. it's a little bit musty. Yeah. But you have fantastic tips on your mm -hmm. website. But also, um, like I've got the Sustainable Lifestyle Handbook. Um, of yours, like I bought that last time, and it is fabulous. I'm I'm going to do some of those things. Um, I can't believe I haven't been doing them earlier. Uh, even um, even in your oh yes, we have to mention this too. The brand new book you're working on, you even go into de into it in depth as well. So oh, there's a whole people, chapter about exactly. cleaning and laundry. Not oh, great. Yeah, and it's all sustainable. It's all eco-friendly, these uh, cleaning and laundry tips. There's not a, one tip in there that's using harsh chemicals. It's all using stuff that you probably already have in your kitchen or you can yeah. easily get for, you know, a buck or two at the supermarket. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but but that is something else that uh, is also very frustrating to me is is uh, people don't seem to realize that we're we're washing our clothes too much. 
and we're using too many chemical detergents. And I mean, again, we we all grew up with those soap commercials and detergent commercials, and I'm sure they're still out there, but I don't have cable mm -hmm. TV. So, <laughs> and so I don't know. Um, but those chemicals are horrible. They're not only horrible mm. for the environment, they're horrible for your clothes, you know? Mm. And then when people are there and washing, you wear a t-shirt once, right? If there's, as long as there's no stains on it and it doesn't actually stink, you don't mm. need to wash it. You don't, you don't need to wear something once and then wash it unless there's a reason to wash it, right? If you're super sweaty, awesome, wash it. But you know, yes. sometimes, yeah, you put you put on a shirt or something, you wear it for a couple hours for to go out to dinner or something, you don't spill anything on it, do the armpit sniff check, and if it's okay, <laughs> hang it back up. You, you don't need to waste the water, you don't need to use the chemicals. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. I do have here a, um, a cover of some of your ebooks that people can find. Um, $3 for quite a few pages, very good. And including your brand new, like literally brand new. Today, released today. Yes. yes, 225 pages of refashioning tutorials, awesome. sustainable tips and tricks and just everything, so sewing, I mean, how to sew, everything you could possibly need to uh, create your own fabulous unique wardrobe care for it find it at the thrift store even or in your own closet it's just it's all there it's all in there congratulations <laughs> yeah, yeah thanks <laughs> wow um i've had a look at the book um just to be perfectly transparent sherry sent me a copy and not because sherry's here but because i actually i think i've been thinking more and more about these things as well um you know my my footprint in this world and i really really enjoyed the book i thought it was very good um like even just the section on washing the clothes from the thrift store um i think that's good for washing any of my clothes i'm really excited oh, yeah. about that um upsizing downsizing there's sew projects no sew repairing alterations yeah. embellishment distressing how to spot vintage clothing everything from tops bodysuits skirts pants outerwear like like it's like amazing you literally can can make an entire what like 50 years worth of wardrobes <laughs> from, from this one book really it's got everything everything and i i mean even shoes right shoes mm. accessories and plus what you can do with all of the leftover scraps as well <laughs> wow. yeah so i really i really tried hard to uh to make this you know kind of like a uni course hence the name refashioning 101 right <laughs> so yeah. it's mm -hmm. really everything that you uh could possibly want need or desire i hope mm. <laughs> yeah and i think it's important to note um we're, we have some very talented people in the sewing community and sherry is one of these people she's done everything in this book like Oh this yeah, is of course. Scary. You know, like this isn't no she publisher, had an idea. no designer. No, no. Yeah. I'm everything. Photographer, the model. Yes. <laughs> yes. You definitely you need to give yourself like a huge pat on huge the back. Pat on back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But such is life with uh, you know, kind of online and and working online um it's the same with you guys you kind of do everything yourselves too right there's no camera people or editors no. or anything we we have a, a huge variety of skills <laughs> that we must That's learn right. <laughs> so, we're our own yeah we're our own team doing we everything are. Yeah, exactly yeah and a lot of people don't realize that yeah and on my site i do actually have a whole section called behind the scenes of blogging for anyone who is interested in uh, knowing what what does go on behind the scenes and uh, I have everything from and it's brutally honest like it's super honest <laughs> because that's just me <laughs> and, uh, and yes everything from the actual money I make which is not a lot it's not even enough to pay for one year of my domain name from my site um, mm. you know so and everything in between that all the stuff you have to learn yeah so uh, again, that's, an, that's a really good thing to check out as well if anyone's curious about uh, what goes on behind the scenes of, of working online. So. 
That's and great. as always, our, we have the links. Um, so if you're watching on the live show and podcast up above, uh, right by the title of the show, in the little eye in the circle, you will find links um, to, um, to get the book if you're interested in the book, um, to the website, to our YouTube channel, um, to a couple, like one of our videos about like busting myths of um, thrifting as well. So definitely check that out. And if you're watching on YouTube, it'll be down below in the description. So that's right. And I am, of course, also all over social media on, uh, you know, Instagram and Confessions of a Refashion is a Facebook page. And I share tips and tutorials multiple times in a day <laughs> over <laughs> across my social media as well. So. Yeah, lots of good free stuff going on. And, great. And um, Maria, you've seen her not on um, through her website. The main place you've seen her is different. Yep. So I, I follow you on Facebook and also on Instagram. So when the videos come up, I have a look. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're always informative and so much fun to watch. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that that is something that I, I was a teacher for quite a few years. And um, <laughs> I find that... And again, every everybody can probably have the blah, 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 sorry, <laughs> losing my train of thought and a different language <laughs> was just about to come out. So. <laughs> if it was Greek, I wouldn't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. I would have loved it. <laughs> Polioria. Uh, <laughs> okay. <that's>, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So because I was a teacher for so long, and everybody had that one teacher maybe in high school or maybe when you were a bit younger, that was fun in class, who taught mm -hmm. in a really entertaining manner. And you remembered, you did well in that class. It was enjoyable, you looked forward to it. And so because of my years of teaching, and that's how I taught mm -hmm. um, in the most enjoyable way, I actually was characters in my class. I would show up as characters. <laughs> And my students were always like, Mike, what is this? <laughs> but they always did well on their tests. Always, always. Yeah. And so I find that presenting my videos, my social media posts, my blog tutorials, my books in a fun and entertaining manner, yeah. it sticks here, doesn't it? And you it remember it the next time you're shopping. Hey, maybe I shouldn't go to that fast fashion store. Maybe. I'll go take some of the tips that I discovered over to uh, the thrift store today, right? Mm. Or the next time you're doing laundry or, you know, whatever. It, it sticks in the head. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we've got a question from Laurie Ann. Did you, well, do you want to have a look at that one? Um, sorry. Laurie Ann has asked, do you go to thrift stores to purchase fabric? Oh, that's an awesome question. Yeah. I, I actually, um, everything I do is without patterns, by the way. So I don't yeah. use patterns ever. Yep. I can't. You mentioned I can't. that last time, yep. Yes, I can't. Um, so when I do buy fabric, though, it is always, always secondhand, always mm -hmm. from the thrift stores because yep. I am a very, very sustainable, eco friendly lassie. And I think a lot of people don't seem to realize this, but just as fast fashion and unsustainable, unethical fashion is produced, you know, in terrible factory conditions, so is the fabric. You know, the fabric that you get yeah. at these big famous fabric stores brand new is produced in the exact same way as the fabric that is produced to make the garments that go to the fast fashion store. So buying secondhand fabric means you are not supporting any of that at all and it would be really great if more sewists would kind of realize this and uh stop plunking down your money on these they're very overpriced as well you know mm. when you think about the cost of uh, fast fashion is very very cheap how come the fabric you know the stores mark it up so much you know, so they make a bigger yeah. profit, oh, but yeah, still, but still, it's the factory workers mm. that are, you know, bearing the brunt of uh, the kind of corporate greed and the greed of the consumer in uh, these first world countries. So, yes, I absolutely do buy secondhand fabric and um, vintage bed sheets and vintage tablecloths are mm. like my favorite mm. because 
always they have the most beautiful embroidery on the doilies and the tablecloths and you can't where are you going to get that yeah. you know yeah. unless you do it yourself plus you know that someone maybe you know 30 40 years ago put so much love and attention and just it's just beautiful when you think about the story maybe behind it and then you take yes. it home wash it and you transform it into something else you know just as beautiful so yeah yeah. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Lorianne, for that question. And I think, like, for people who aren't keen to go to a thrift store, um, there's yeah, you shopping your own closet is great because sometimes oh. you'll make something. And, like, as sewists, when you make something, your sweat and tears go into that garment. And then years later, it might not fit, or, you know, maybe the styles have changed. And, instead of throwing it out um you can exchange it like um you you talk about doing thrift exchanges with friends um oh yeah but, but or you could also use it to make another garment whether mm -hmm. it's a completely different garment or if you're upsizing or downsizing and you have lots of tutorials that discuss upsizing and downsizing mm. as well yeah well in particular upsizing i seem to be one of the very few people online mm -hmm. who actually provide upsizing tutorials and i receive emails every single day from people saying thank you so much because i don't know everybody goes and buys big stuff and sorry but making something big smaller isn't that that it's not that much of a trauma to do that you know you it, it's not um to make something bigger usually means you got to add some something to it right and yes. uh and i think that you know for myself like i said i mean i have a quite an hourglassy figure and uh, nothing nothing even you know thrift stores of course regardless of where you get it nothing ever fits me off the rack properly so mm -hmm. if something fits me in my bottom then it's not going to fit me in my waist or if it fits me kind of under my chest i can't get it done up over my chest <laughs> and uh, yeah you know so i think the up the upsizing tutorials are very very important and uh, which is why i included a bunch in my book and uh, there's also a bunch available on my site and sometimes all it takes is removing an elastic waist mm. to upsize something like that's it which that's no sewing that's no that's nothing so that's, simple yeah just carefully removing with your with your little you know seam ripper take off that elastic waist and you have a lovely dress put a belt on and head out you know i, I shared that actually um a few weeks ago on my channel uh, a little old lady nightgown that had kind of an <laughs> elastic empire waist and yeah took that out and ironed the creases and yet yeah, threw a belt on and now it's a fabulous you know maxi dress that i can wear in the summer from from a so very, simple. very old nightgown so simple. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> And that, and that shows your creativity, you know, something as such a simple solution and you've got, mm. a, you know, a fabulous maxi dress. Well, yeah, and that's the, the lovely little tiny thrift store that I go to that's in my neighborhood that is still mm. a genuine thrift store or a charity shop, I guess. All of the money goes to the, the animal shelter and there's no clothes in there over $2 and all of the linens and stuff are like 50 cents, which is how it should be. You know, they should be selling cheaper to get more out the door mm -hmm. instead of hey let's put 10 15 percent of our donations on the floor and we chuck a good 50 percent and the rest we give to the vintage pickers and antique sellers for mm -hmm. a higher markup you know that's ridiculous because people think they take a garbage bag full of clothes and they mm -hmm. think uh hey all of this is going to get sold it's all going to go to someone who needs it or whatever and that is absolutely not the case mm -hmm. most of the time the bulk of it does end up in the landfill you know when you donate to these big thrift stores but uh but yeah this this little thrift store of mine they know me now because i go there so often and uh, they actually will hold things for me <laughs> so, there you so go. That, yeah that's how when? i got this this nightgown <laughs> the lady said oh sherry i have this one do you want this it's so no one's gonna buy it it's purple and pink flowers and but i was like yes of course i want it <laughs> Of course, the 1970s nightgown. Woohoo! <laughs> so yeah, get to know your local little thrift store staff, and uh, you just might get some some 
fabulous deals. And uh, yeah, once they know what you want, you can even ask them when they're picking through to set some stuff aside for you. And then you get a bag of stuff for, you know, five or ten dollars. So everybody wins. Everyone wins. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've even gotten three sewing machines. <laughs> wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. we, have, we have some lovely places in the area. I, I keep I was keep saying to Sherry, Sherry, you think should come visit. <laughs> <laughs> We're both in Canada, so I'm trying to tempt her up this way. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, of it when when my book sells, however many it's going to cost for me to get to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, I I really enjoy thrifting. I now with me, I often find a fabric uh, like this is a red linen. Um, it had a collar button down the front kind of dress. Yeah, and. Yeah, so I find a fabric I like, and then I go home. And I'm like, what am I gonna do with this? You know, I know that the fabric is really lovely and cool, but it doesn't fit me. And I know I'm gonna do something, and then I end up coming up with something just I never would have if I just sketched it. Mm -hmm. I never would have made. So I'm curious yeah. with you: is it the garment first? Is it the fabric? You know, like, do you have an idea yeah. when you go in what you're looking for? It. I always have a list on my phone. I just like a perma list of for things that I, I just have, you know, creeping in my brain that <laughs> are saying, make me, make me. <laughs> so I have uh, this list of ingredients, I call them, that I'm always looking for. Um, so most recently, I would like to get uh, a 1980s big puff sleeve kind of prom dress or bridesmaids dress to refashion yeah. that's that's my next big goal too because i have a really cool idea so, <laughs> um, but so yeah, other than my list a lot of the times and in some thrift stores i get really weird looks i kind of run my hands down the racks mm -hmm. as i'm walking in between the clothes and if some fabric kind of feels cool to me or I've gotten really good at uh, you know kind of feeling out 70s 60s polyester yeah. type of fabric. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. then I, I stop and look and uh, so that's my first pass and then my second pass I turn around at the other end and then I look down one side and see if anything jumps out at me fabric wise um, and I think really it it is mostly the fabric because I do know that even if it doesn't fit I can turn it into something else as long as mm -hmm. you know I I love the fabric so yeah and um, vintage neckties are absolutely fantastic because you can use them the first of all the patterns are wonderful and whatever you do with it is you're creating something totally unique and no one will have ever seen it before so i like to take them and, and stitch them around the collars of oh, yeah. shirts yep. of blazers i mean that it looks fantastic the little scraps of them look really cool on the top of a pocket Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you sew two of them. Here's a tutorial from my big book. Sew two of them together and you make a very, very long Obi style wrap belt if you sew the ends together. Okay. Yep. And then wrap it around and tie it. Yeah. <laughs> She's just got so many ideas, guys. You I have to check out her site and definitely. It, um, it doesn't stop ever. <laughs> so. Yeah. I think what I like about um, the book is the site is great, but I guess it's a accumulation over time. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have things here, you have things there, beginner things, intermediate things, you know. Um, whereas this, it's it's like, you know, beginning, middle, and it has a, yeah. a really nice flow. It's pulls it all together um, very nicely and is entirely inspiring. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing, I mean, some people, they do enjoy going through my blog, but I think if you're going to be there for a few days, like that's if you want to, and, and I have tried to organize it as conveniently as possible. I, you know, at the top bar, it's the, the tutorial index and then a bunch of sub indexes under those and wow. uh, to make it as easy as possible for yeah. people to find things. But yeah, it's still, I mean, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> But I think having the book of 200 pages, you can go from end to end and you've pretty oh, much yeah. got everything there. So, I yeah. think, you know, that's such a great resource. Yeah. And, of course, I, I made 
even that, the table of contents, very convenient. You can click on whichever title you want and you go immediately there. And then at the end of that tutorial, click back to contents, you go back. So, you know, because for myself, I buy other people's eBooks and I can't stand it when the contents, you, you can't click it and mm -hmm. you to make it easy to go places. And I know you can do it because I do it for all of my books. Yeah. So, so it's I not that it can hard. Be done. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, and it's when you really have to scroll and scroll and scroll, and then you have to try to remember. Oh, where did I see that? And mm. yeah, so, so I I write books how I want to read books, and I'm a very methodical, organized person. So, <laughs> so I like my books to be the same way. I mean, I think a lot of people when they do meet me and mm. do see my house, and it is very very neat very tidy everything has a place <laughs> and uh, i think it's a it's i i'm a bit of an oxymoron am i is that the right word it better be i'm an english teacher and <laughs> <laughs> you know where where i people kind of see me as this quirky oh tattoo you know chicky and uh but in reality i am very very organized and methodical and things have to be a certain way and and i think you know, it's those two kind of the yin and yang of my personality, I mm. guess. You've got discipline behind what you do. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but it's, I mean, I think as well, any creative person has this, right? I, you have to, you cannot, even if you are a creative person who works in organized chaos, it's mm. still organized. Right, <laughs> it's still yeah. organized. It is. <laughs> Now, um, normally we'd also ask things like, you know, what do you see in your future? But um, I know that you're working on, and you've mentioned it on your channel before, you're working on a project. You've written a, a couple different pitches for shows. Twelve. That, twelve. Oh, my God. Twelve. I thought it was, I thought it was <laughs> just a couple? Twelve. Twelve. And even a dozen. <laughs> a dozen or so. She's yeah. written a dozen pitches for... Um, possible shows for like Netflix hello um yeah, please about <laughs> and I think that would be amazing I would definitely watch that so um well, yeah not just thrift, us? but not just thrifting refashioning I mean I have game show style I have you know going in and redoing people's closets for them <laughs> you name it it's it's there <laughs> well and of course plenty of characters <laughs> need the characters yeah <laughs> that's well that's the thing you have to think if i do that on my own imagine what i could do with professional makeup artists <laughs> <laughs> i i definitely think it would be exceptionally cool because um i mean there are kind of like they like thrift things and furniture wise but yeah we haven't really seen clothing where they're uh, embellishing, thrifting, upsizing, downsizing, refashioning, you know, just um, or, doing any, or any makeover shows you see, they're always, here's a credit card, go shopping, you know, consume more. Mm. <laughs> it's like, no, how about using what they already have? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, and reimagining that. <laughs> I don't want to get too much away, but. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, can yeah. have all the resources <laughs> in your own home, so why wouldn't you use them? Exactly. Exactly. Mm. And who who wouldn't want to watch that? You know, this mm. is uh, this is always what it's so, so interesting to me that um, in Europe there there's so many shows about upcycling and redoing just about anything you can imagine, and they're very very popular. Um, there are a couple available on streaming services in North America, but they're not so popular, which drives me up the bend. Mm. But um, that's why I wonder if one of the reasons I do have difficulty getting to the right production company is because mm -hmm. people are like this here, you know, when it, when it comes to upcycling and reusing and they kind of, it's a lot easier just to give someone a credit card and say, Hey, go shopping for your makeover. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, hopefully someone will, uh, will see the value in this refashion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Call me. I, call, I, I, call them, call anyone. Yeah. <laughs> they know how to get me. Yes. <laughs> I definitely think that it's an idea that you'll you'll hear more of more and more of in the future as well. Mm. So um if they don't pick it up today, which what are they thinking? I'm sure yeah. they will soon. So I I, I if they're yeah, really 
happy they must. So um, it well, looks yeah. like even the audience is excited about that. Megan says a refashioning show with Sherry would be awesome. Wouldn't it, Megan? Wouldn't it? <laughs> and Samina hopes that there was positive responses to to your show pitches. Um, yes. <laughs> the most positive one is yet to come, and it's going to be fantastic. I exactly. Noticed. Exactly. Yes. There's. There's. A, I have a toe in a door right now, so <laughs> so I just got to see if I can, you know, manage to That's kick right. it a little wider yeah. right now. <laughs> and uh, Linda, she's uh, an Ontario, Ontarian. What do you mean when you live in Ontario? Ontarioan? <laughs> I think, she, yeah. She lives in the same province as the two of us. Um, she says it seems like Sherry is someone who lives life to the fullest, like everyone should. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I'd like to, you know, get out of my studio more. <laughs> but, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's uh, like like we were saying before when you're kind of the one woman show. It's mm. you are the show, right? You are so, the show. Okay. So yeah, if anyone if anyone is in Toronto and wants to like hang out or uh, Dawn, if you <laughs> get here some time, <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> then um, yeah, please do get in touch and uh, let's go thrifting. Be cool. <laughs> that would be a fun day. <laughs> it would be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we do have another audience question too. At uh, Lorianne. Hey, Lorianne. Uh, she says, "Do you also purchase used sewing equipment?" I only have used sewing equipment. I actually have five sewing machines, and uh, four of them are from Germany, mm. including the terrifying, scary one. Oh. And <laughs> Because that you could do stuff with denim on. I'm oh, sure of it. Oh yeah, you can. You can yeah. sew. I mean, you could sew hippo skin. I think oh. it's like it's perfect. It's, I mean, it's so terrifying. Um, and then, of course, the sewing machine that I use that I got in Canada is from the thrift store. Of course, it is. Of course, it is. I only use uh, secondhand everything. Actually, my thread. My thread is secondhand. <laughs> like every single thing in my uh, studio is secondhand. So, so yeah. And and that's the thing that I always say to people: if I can do it, mm. so can you. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm going to be 46 actually in less than a month. So uh, there's no age limit either, ladies, on uh, changing your and changing kids. your habits and changing your life and you know, yeah. Uh, Samina is interested in knowing uh, where do you get secondhand threads? Oh, um, I actually got loads of them when I lived in Germany, and uh, <laughs> and so I'm still working through a bunch of those. Um, but the larger chain thrift stores actually here in Canada actually mm -hmm. package up thread. And usually sell it for like 99 cents or 199, depending on how many threads are in there. And there's usually around 10 threads. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people ask me and say, oh, but doesn't it break because it's old? No, I find that vintage threads, if it has stood the test of time already, mm. it, it doesn't break. You know, if it's something super cheapy, of course mm. it is. But brand new thread that's super cheapy is going to break, right? So, right. um, just, I have, I might have some here that I can show you. Um, you can see that. So this, whoops, this is one of my Germany ones. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's these very, very old, old style uh, with the, it's very thick cardboard here. Yeah. And uh, these ones were from about 1978, <laughs> according, ah. according to the seller. Um, but I mean, I think online, is a wonderful resource for mm -hmm. uh, for getting things secondhand as well. Um, and again, hit your local thrift store. Sometimes you go to the thrift store and they actually have sewing baskets that someone has donated with the contents. Like, in, yeah, mm -hmm. those That's are right. my yeah. favorite. Because yeah. I, I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> yeah, and you look in and it's like, when they have like three tiers in them and every t it's more and more treasures to go through. And mm -hmm. you know, you have these, gorgeous vintage bias bindings mm. and trim and it I mean yeah and stuff like buttons and snaps I mean come on you can't do any better than vintage ones because they were a hundred percent built to last mm. so there's yeah there's no reason at all to buy brand new sewing gear there really isn't 
Yeah. yeah. We were in a shop um, in New York City, and Anne uh, might be able to tell me the name. I think it was called Fab Scraps. And they had everything from like knitting, knitting machine, uh, whole things for knitting machines, like the yarn. It had scraps of, and they were in according to different sizes. So they had like really small, bigger ones on the roll. They had um, scraps. panels yeah. that. Yeah, thanks, Anne. That people had uh, made just panels so you could put them on the back of a jean jacket or whatever. Or oh, cool. In, or entire garments that were pieced together. And I mean, really pieced together from random pieces. Um, it, entire garments like that. So, um, mm. and that's not only the one place there. Apparently, it has a couple different places. So, I mean, mm. I thought that was uh, pretty interesting, you know, in mm -hmm. the garment district kind of what well, wasn't exactly I think it was just outside but um having things like that as well not just so I think I think it's starting to pick up more speed hopefully hopefully hopefully, hopefully yeah. yeah it just we need to get more people sharing I think I mean that's the thing the more people share this these kind of tutorials these kind of interviews the more you share these online the more chance they have to go viral and then they get picked up by a news agency or something like that and then it gets spread out even more, you know, so share, 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 share. That's the most important thing always, especially for us working online. Share. <laughs> Put it out there. Yeah. So I have a question for the two of you. Do you think that there's any kind of stigma in the sewing community for, you know, like sharing something you made, you know, from scratch, you see on Instagram, you see all these posts versus sharing something that you thrifted? Like not for people who just solely thrift, but do you think there's kind of like, because you tend to see people who sew things from scratch and people who thrift, but um, yeah, you're kind of at the junction of that, aren't you, Sherry? You do, you do <laughs> I both. Guess, yeah. yeah. Do, do you think that it's because people have this weird thing that it's not cool or something? Like why, why don't we see more of that in between? Uh, yeah, well, I have no idea. <laughs> for, for me, I think that's that's what I do. <laughs> so yeah. I think I do think though that some people who have maybe grown up sewing and grew up, you know, with the wonderful closets full of these beautiful fabrics that they could choose from, and they know how to use patterns and all of this. I think maybe they might look down on it a little bit, the whole refashioning thing, or they might maybe feel a bit intimidated to cut something up that's already been made i think maybe they they might be a bit scared to to cut things up and i have had people ask me that before and say oh but if you find a like if i find this my my thrifting unicorn my 80s puff sleeve <laughs> dress you know aren't i going to be a bit scared to to cut it up. I said, no, of course I'm not. <laughs> I'm looking for it so I can cut it up. Um, and it just, I think, to those people who are maybe a bit hesitant to cut into something you've already made or somebody else has made, why? Just do it. Because mm -hmm. what's better, to make it into something else or to donate it? No, now that you know it's probably not going to end up on the shop floor and also chucking it, no, that's not mm. an option. You mm. know, so if you're not planning on giving it to someone who will wear it and appreciate it, make it into something else. Why not? What have you mm. got to lose? Nothing, you know, mm. I mean, I make mistakes all the time. I mean, I have not been sewing for that <laughs> long at all, guys. And <laughs> if I make a mistake, which happens really a lot, then I, <laughs> just cut it and start over again. Yep. Like all the time it happens. So maybe something doesn't, I don't make a pair of pants out of that bit of skirt fabric, you know, because I cut it too small. Maybe it's a pair of shorts or maybe mm. it's a shirt for my daughter or, you know, I mean, you're only ever limited by your own imagination. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah, and you've got so many ideas happening in your head all the time that if you've mm. gone down one path, you can always switch and go yeah. another path. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I mean, like the, and if you've cut it and it's just not salvageable, make a bunch of hair scrunchies. They're back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's always lots of little things that you can do with it. Patch yeah. your jeans or lots of other things. Um, Anne said about that place, Fab Scrap, that most of it is from businesses that have to pay to recycle their excess fabric. So they're not even just donating it. So yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. Yeah. So there are um, in Europe, it's a, a very different situation. And uh, I did while I when I did live there, I, I interviewed people and I worked with people who uh, were, you know, garment recyclers, fabric recyclers. And uh, it was very interesting because here you they pay. They do pay. They have to they pay to, to have people you take it. And it's like, what? Mm -hmm. It just, it's, but it's so a business bizarre. cost. It's a business cost. It should be. You know? <laughs> For them, I mean, it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I just, I, I just wish that North America would kind of catch up to Europe. But mm -hmm. I think another problem is because it is, so, we have so much space, you know, such big country here that uh, people kind of say well well we have enough space check it it goes into the landfill and who cares mm -hmm. you forget about it out of sight out of mind you know the but agency's not there yeah yeah yet yet yet, yet. yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um goodness but looking at the time we've actually gone a little bit over time looking at it but it's because <laughs> that happens when you talk with sherry because she's very very fun to talk to and very interesting <laughs> But yeah, I would definitely highly, highly, highly encourage you um, check out her book. She has that one brand new Refashioning 101 mm -hmm. um, book. And she also has all those other books. Um, yeah, books. there's like 17 of them, I think. <laughs> yep, yep. And uh, yeah, and on all her tutorials, her tips, her tricks on her blog, as well as mm. on her YouTube channel, um, her like 200 plus videos as well. So mm. lots of content to get you all fired up and inspired to try something, you know, push yourself out of your comfort zone and give it a yeah. try. I think you'll really, you know, you'll look back and think, yeah, that kind of was cool. Yeah. You're an amazing resource, Sherry. Well, thank you. you really are. <laughs> I love to hear that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, and Anne says, thank you for being part of this movement. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope, I hope that I can actually, you know, be one of the driving forces behind oh, it yeah. and, uh, and hopefully get, get more people realizing that new to you is still new. That's a good one. Eh? <laughs> <I like> that. <laughs> Maybe part of the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah no definitely and um i love how you um kind of sign off on some of your videos on your zigzag comment could you maybe oh, yeah. do a draft? I catch you on the zigzag and do you know why i say that i no. say that because when i first started learning to sew i asked you know my husband's great aunt um mm -hmm. who it gave me this ancient machine how can I finish the seams? Because they were, you know, fraying and what, and she was at this time point, she was like 92. And so she, she just basically was saying, well, zigzag, just zigzag the seams, just zigzag them. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. And to this day, because I don't have a fancy serger, I just have, you know, these old vintage thrift store machines. That's how I finish all my scenes. So that's my sign off on my video. It's catch you on the zigzag. That's lovely. <laughs> and that was also the title of my uh, first book, Life on the Zigzag. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice yeah. getting all this behind the scenes kind of stuff. <laughs> but I do, I do enjoy it when you say that on your videos. It's kind of, yeah, it ties it together nicely. It, yes, well, everybody needs a catchphrase, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. So we, yeah, we've definitely taken up far too much of your time. We're going to let you go. And, and yeah, just thank you. Like, thank you not once, but twice coming on the show. Yeah. Well, thanks for, and again, I will come back again whenever you like <laughs> to, uh, you know, impart my, my sustainable lifestyle wisdom. Maybe oh, yeah. we should do a show all about sustainable tips and tricks and uh, how to, how to live a more eco-friendly. Sounds great. Yeah, Sounds that like a really good show, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, thank yeah. you, Sherry. Thank you. Thank Mwah. you. Talk again. Bye. 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 <laughs> okay. Keep <laughs> on um, Riley. Yes. Yeah, my your daughter. My, she's uh, saying, can I put my hand in the video and wave <laughs> hi to them? Ha, ha, ha. And we have yes or no. So, yes, you can put your hand and wave. <laughs> Just the hand. Come on. Oh, both hands. Well done. That's the best.
Listen, my comedian here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Yeah, well, okay. I, hope, I hope you both have a good night then. <laughs> okay. Bye. 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 Bye, you two. Bye. Oh my gosh. That was the best ending we've had in a long time. I, Seriously. I, I completely, completely agree. That was hilarious um yeah i i do love that she has a lot of humor in uh, all of her videos so confessions of a refashionista that is her new book refashioning 101 look at that cool pom-pom lapel jacket that she made there <coughs> quickly before we finish tell us about your your dress what you're wearing you actually haven't have you talked about it yet yeah i think we mentioned i mentioned it super quick earlier on that it's it was a. Yep. Uh, uh goodness it is a red it was a red dress that had a collar yep. and button uh, button placket and i took it apart yep. and this is the bracelet uh bit of ribbon kind of goes it was around a question from anna christina that's why i'm asking yeah yeah i i just answered secretly with the ah, okay. message to her in the in the questions yeah so um and like i was saying uh, uh okay sorry the back so i'm gonna and the back come on i can't go Oh, because um, that's very good. And it has a very high slit right here. But um, because I knew I was going to be <laughs> sitting down, I didn't wear high waisted pants. I'm wearing exercise pants, you know, like leggings. <laughs> the audience loves it. So I can't quite stand up without um, showing my leggings. Oh, here See? she goes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway so we've got to answer my... our audience questions come on yeah that's no, good uh no it was my mvp dress um that is just my my thrifting dress i love i love thrifting i did a thrifted apron uh for so much talent when we did the apron challenge and that was from like a vintage kind of house coat that was far too small for me but had the most gorgeous stripes absolutely loved it it was so much fun so I, I don't do it as much as I should. I'm definitely going to do it more with my own closet. And um, I'm just thrilled that everyone uh, listened to tonight's show. It's a yeah. it's definitely sewing related. And um, I wanted to share two weeks ago, we had the lovely ladies from Sew Over 50 on. They were mm -hmm. fantabulous. Last week, we had um, Alethea, uh, Tisa and the lovely Elizabeth come on and talk about refashioning mm -hmm. and then next week um, Elizabeth can't join us but Alethea and Tisa are coming on and talking specifically about alterations which I think is very important like we we're talking about with Sherry when you kind oh, of yeah up for next something. week yeah yeah for next week yeah so next week. that's pretty much it we kind of we just had a fantastic time talking with Sherry. I can't thank her enough for coming on. Yeah. And She's I'm very happy great. that Maria was, uh, was back. Because yep. at Velosos, right there, right there. Um, <laughs> she, she had a meeting at work last time, so she couldn't join us because she is in Australia. So it's Wednesday during the day for her. So we Wednesday are Wednesday morning, yeah. It clashed <laughs> with a meeting at work. So I'm sorry I wasn't here last week, everyone. Yeah, so we're thrilled that she could be here tonight. So yeah to all the fantastic people who watched tonight uh thank you yep. so much for joining us we really do appreciate thank you it. our audience and have a good night <laughs> yep cheers everyone <laughs>